Hi everyone, in this series we're looking at how to use inputs in a vMix production and in this particular video we're looking at input settings. When adding an input into vMix it will appear in your input section which is down here. This will display anything you've added to your vMix production. Each of these inputs are configurable through the input settings menu. Now we just need to go through and add a video to demonstrate the input settings. So click on add input, we'll go to video, browse. Now we've got a video input in our vMix production, we can edit and make changes to the input by clicking the little cog icon or double clicking the input window. We've now opened up the input settings screen. From here we can make changes to the input behavior and the video itself. Okay, so up the top we can change the name of the video to make it something easier to recognize. Some videos have long names and it's easy to rename it here so that you can use it in your production. You might want to give it a descriptive name or even something like video one or add one. So we're going to go here, change this. I'm going to call this one vMix Live. Now, as you notice that the file name above it hasn't changed, but the name of the input will. So we'll close this by pressing X anytime it will save your input settings. So you'll notice now here that we have vMix Live as the name of this input. Underneath it, we have aspect ratio. Now by default, this is going to be source and the source aspect ratio of the input is listed here as widescreen. Now because we're making a HD production, we wanna leave this as widescreen. However, if you had an old SD production, you might wanna choose maybe widescreen or something that will stretch that video to match the rest of your production. Underneath this, we have the category section. Now by default, every input goes into the black category here, which is the main input section. You can then move or duplicate them to different categories by clicking a different color here. So for example, we'll click the red one and notice that the cog icon is turned red. We'll go to the red uh, category. It will now appear in this video. It's always going to appear in the main section, but you can break down each input category by moving it there. We can rename it. Notice that will change there. You can also just drag and drop them into different categories like this. Okay, now underneath that we have a sharpen and mirror section. Now sharpen will create a sharpen effect on the video or input. So by using this tool down here, we can magnify into our input and you notice that there's a sharpen effect there. By clicking mirror, it will flip the input. Now underneath that, we have the input behavior section. So the top one is automatically mix audio. Now this means that your audio will automatically turn on each time it's transitioned to the output. So we'll tick it and I'll show you what I mean. So we'll just bring this across. And as you can see, the audio is turned on. You should be able to hear the audio now. The next one is automatically play with transition, which means that the video will automatically play each time it's transitioned across. So it's automatically playing. Okay, next we have automatically restart with transition. So at the moment, every time we transition it, it pauses, but it keeps playing from that position. By ticking this, it'll automatically restart. So as you can see here, it's gone to zero. And we bring it back, we'll go back to zero again. And finally, automatically pause after transition. Now, as you notice, every time we transition it back, it pauses. If you wanted to let it play, you could just untick this button here. Now on the right hand side, we have mouse click action up the top. Now the mouse click action refers to what happens when you click the input window. So by default, it's set to preview. So every time you click it, it will move that particular input to the preview. However, you can change this action. So for example, we could make it a cut transition. So when we click on it, it will cut to the output. Now we can change to something maybe like an overlay. So when we click it, it appears in our overlay channel here. Or we can make it do nothing if we really wanted to or a transition. So it's up to you what you wanna do for your production. Now underneath that we have the source aspect ratio, which we mentioned before is widescreen, the resolution, the frame rate and the deinterlacing. Now underneath that, we have the audio settings. If we click this, it will display the audio settings for the input. 
Now these audio settings are probably easier managed from the audio mixer section, so you can do them all together. However, you can change them here. Whatever settings changes are made here will reflect with here. It's all the same information. And you can also create a virtual input of this input by clicking here. Now finally, up the top right hand corner, we have a change button. Now what this does is actually change the source of the input. So we can change this video file for another video file and keep all the same settings as before. So as you notice, the name remains the same, the aspect ratio, the category, anything we've changed down here, mouse click action all remains the same, but the actual file has changed. So you notice the file name has changed here. The color adjust section can be used to change the coloring or the alpha of your video. And for camera inputs, you can also set the auto white balance. So these are some of the changes you can make and then you can reset them. You can change the alpha of the video and then you can reset. Now, if you want to change the saturation and make it black and white, you can drag this down here to make a black and white video. In the color key section, you can create a chroma key for your input. Um, this is great for using green screens and virtual sets. Now, we do have an in-depth video about this that you can watch via our link. Position allows you to change the position of the video. And multi-view allows you to create an input with multiple inputs on it. Um, you can check out our other tutorial video to find out more information about these. Triggers allow you to create actions around your input. So for example, when your video input finishes playing, it can automatically transition to a camera. Or once it's transitioned in, it can automatically display a title. And we have a separate tutorial video for this if you would like to check that out. If you have tally lights, you can assign them to your input here. For compatible PTZ cameras, you can set this up here also. The advanced section is for advanced users only, and it allows you to add a frame delay to cameras and view and change properties for the direct show filters used to display the input. Now, once you're happy with all of your settings, you can go back and save them by clicking the X button up the top here. Now that you've set up your input, it's time to start adding more to your production. Now remember, if you ever want to change the settings for your input, just click the settings cog or double click the input. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, please let us know.